All right, welcome back to the channel of PMA LCS. We've got our third, no, our fourth and final matchup for the night. We've got Double Penetration versus News Team Assemble. Uh, so far, we've got two teams on the opposite side of the standings right now with Double Penetration second to last and the News Team Assemble vying for that second space, which would give them the buy when it comes to the playoffs. Uh, casting today is me, Rob, and then we've got Biscuit Hat here, and then on the camera we've got Steck Monster. So the three of us will be your guide for the night as we watch these two team battle it out on the rift. Yeah, um, it's gonna be another great match here, as we saw last game's match. Um, you know, I, I believe every Every match here is fun to watch. Um, both teams have started pick ban already. Um, so if we could go to that, that would be great. Um, yeah, double penetration uh, coming out with their three bands of Olaf, Kane, and Caitlin. News team assembles, banning their third band. Oh, Garen, Yasuo, and Malzahar. Malzahar, a pretty common ban against the torpedo on the other side there. Uh, what, we've got Kaisa as a first pick here. What kind of team comp do you think they'll be running here? Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, I haven't really watched DP or NTA, um, consistently, so I don't really know. Um, with that Kaisa pick, though, I gotta say, um, OP has a pretty sick Kaisa, and that doesn't really shock me at all. Um, but, you know, banning out the Garen Yasuo... Definitely makes sense. We've seen Bear Jr. play both of those champions at a very high level. Um, so, hope, you know, I would prefer if Double Penetration didn't play a team comp where it's just focused on Bear Jr. because I feel like that's what they've been doing a lot. But, you know, anything's up for grabs as the Morgana pick has a flex pick for Brick and Gurk7. That's true, Morgana's uh, spell shield is probably one of the most important... Uh, Abilities in the game, I guess. <laughs> if you want to call it an ability. Yeah. I mean, um, ooh, we got Mouse Cop playing Lucian here in the bot lane. Um, Lucian is a great AD carry right now. Um, even though that the uh, new meta has basically just destroyed AD carries. And I know a lot of our AD carry brethren are really upset with the whole state of AD carries, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but uh, we are uh, waiting here for um, oh, Dull Penetration's next pick is the Zyra here. Zyra is very on the rise right now as a support player. Zyra just has so much poke and like she's very safe and reliable. All you have to do is throw out your vines and just trap someone in the middle of like three plants and she can just chunk your health out for with really like no punishment at all. Uh, mm -hmm. Aurelia is going to be the next one picked up here. Aurelia is also on the surge right now. The uh, the the gain of Aurelia is just she's very strong when it comes to mid late game. Um, her early game is not so much unless she can get like a really good lead early that'll boost her straight into the, the uh, damage that we've got in the mid game. Yeah, I definitely agree. We've seen the Aurelia pick before, 
on Bear Jr. And we're going to see it again here tonight. And he did exceptionally well in his Aurelia game. So no shock there. The buy pick for Baxter, I believe Baxter is kind of like an AD jungler uh, main. And so the buy pick's really great. You got that alt. You have the Q. Um, you know, so you have a lot of CC in the jungle as well as damage. And so that's a pretty pretty good pick um, as long as she is able to get ahead. Um, Sejuani ban here against Kingston HyperX. Yeah, Sejuani. I don't know if Sejuani is pretty much in the flavor, but I think HyperX is very good on Sejuani. Um, I think it's been banned against him quite a few times already. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's got it at one game, and I think they won that game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I believe so. And, I mean, even... You know, even while Sejuani isn't in the meta right now, she does provide a lot of, um, you know, CC and utility for the team in general. And so it's definitely a pretty pretty good thing to ban. Um, so with that being said, um, it Malachi looks like we have, yeah, yeah, the Malkai ban here, um, as well as the Zinzao ban. I know Kingston HyperX is also a very good Zinzao player, and those... Uh, Fourth and fifth bans being used to ban out the jungler here as um, jungle, and I believe mid is up for grabs still. So they're letting the torpedo play whatever he wants, except for the Malzahar here. So um, we'll see what he'll, he'll pick, um, or Kingston as, as well, um, here in the fourth pick for DP. Oh, Shen never mind. Okay. We were still doing the. <laughs> yeah. <still> the, <laughs> the second wow. band coming in from DP of Shen, Maokai, and Shen. Uh, Ron Gurgundy is very big on tank tops. He's not. He's not much of a uh, attack or not attack, but a, a damage heavy kind of player. Um, you know, with with Maokai probably being one of the better or bigger um, champions that he plays. A Malphite, you know. Yeah, you know, that's going to go in this meta. <laughs> um, is that going to go top? It could go top. I would assume probably top. I mean, unless they pull out a Morg mid and Malphite Vladimir bot, possibly. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, um, but, I mean, but then there's Lucian. Lucian, too. Lucian's, Lucian's probably the A to carry. Yeah, that's true. I don't believe Ron uh, plays Lucian top, so... Um, ooh, the Galio pick. We saw Galio last game do exceedingly well um, in the mid lane, so that will probably go to the Torpedo, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Galio provides a lot of damage, as well as a great global alt here um, that provides a lot of resistances, as well as a big, a really big knockup. Um, and, you know, having that global pressure is always good to have, um, regardless of your team comp, just because, you know, that provides a lot of utility for the team. And so, um, pretty good pick here for the Torpedo. I believe he plays it as well. So, might see some nasty things here in the mid lane. And it looks like a Trundle pick. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yep, Trundle, there we go. Uh, for Jungle, I believe. I think that was yeah. Yeah. Um, we saw that work actually last game, or the last match as well. So. It looks like um, DP has a pretty strong comp, I believe, and we are waiting for the last and final pick here uh, for NTA. I think with, if you look at DP's uh, complete team comp here, you know, you've got the Galio who wants to start roaming around and start ulting into side lanes. But really, it's probably a good 1v1 into a Malphite, I would assume. Um, mm -hmm. And then your Zyra Kaisa bot's very heavy, <laughs> heavy damage. Um, into Illusion and Morgana. Even though Illusion is one of the top tier AD carries right now, um, a brand. So I would Ooh. assume that brand. Uh, well, I, at this point, who knows where their brand's going to go? The brand and Morgana are pretty flip flop. Yeah, I mean that's definitely like a flex pick here. I don't believe Gerg plays brand. Um, so it might go brand mid actually against the Galio, which would be nice because then you could um, poke out the Galio. Um, however, if you get in range of his taunt, it could be really deadly for the brand or Morgana, honestly. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, Lucian Brand's a pretty big lane. Uh, Lucian Morgana is also a good lane, but I feel like Brand would be better than Tua Galio. With, with all the magic resist that Galio gets, I think a Brand can burn him down a little easier than a Morgana. Mm-hmm. So I would assume that's a Brand mid Morgana bot. Uh, the, more, the spell shield's probably also nice into a Zyra in case. Cyra throws out her, her E there to trap you into the plants. Um, these look like both huge uh, team fights, so I assume we're going to have a couple huge team fights coming into the game around maybe 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, NTA has the Malphite top, the Vi jungle. You know, that could lead to some really epic wombo combos. Um, and as well as the brand, I mean, if all three of those champions just alt at the same time, it could just be really deadly for double penetration. Um, but I believe double penetration also has that on the side of the Aurelia, Galio, um, and Zyra. I mean, those are a lot of big AOE uh, knockups as well as um, they deal a lot of damage. So um, both teams have to... Um, I don't know what happened to our lobby, but both teams really just... Like you said, Rob, they have a lot of wombo combos and um, can be really deadly here 10, 15 minutes into the game. Yeah, as we have a client glitch that's going to delay us slightly a bit here. Um, but if you look at these team comps, you know, you've got a huge big pick potential on NTA. You've got the Morgana binding into a Vi ult, into a Malphite ult, you know. Uh, that's three straight lockdowns right there. And then if there's enough room, a brand can land his stun on there. Lucian's the only one with any form, with no form of CC coming into this team comp for NTA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, going off of that, Rob, who do you think has the better team comp and why? Uh, if you look at both team comps, I think NTA has a stronger team comp when it comes to full 5v5 fights, where as DP has... Some um, has some disengage into this 5v5 fight. However, like the Galio alt is irrelevant um, because it basically, like with a Galio ult, you want to do it from far away and catch someone off guard rather than in the middle of a team fight, you just stop attacking and then alt mm -hmm. everyone. Um, it's a little harder to pull that off, especially into like a Malphite who could just alt you as you're ulting and just cancel it, or a Vi who can point and click alt you and stop your ult as well um but then you have like the zyra full team knockup if she can lay that down into a full uh like 5v5 team fight where she can cut off maybe one or two people and they'll be able to burst someone quickly with a kaisa and an aurelia um if you watch the pvb game versus uh cn c and d the aurelia was able to get into some of the back line and just kill both of them like instantly and they were able to pull out team fights like that. So if you really can get into the backline of Illusion, um, then maybe the 5v5 would be best for DP. Both of them have stronger uh, pros, and then both of them have pretty bad cons as well. Um, NTA, if they all focus the same person, that person's dead, but then all of their alts are down. So um, you have to think about how, if NTA can proceed to catch all of their um not catch but stagger all of their their alts and stuff like that they'll be able to do um pretty well in a full team fight if it gets drawn out and they're able to get their um their alt staggered up a bit mm -hmm. so I, I i think overall i would give it to nta um nta is looking for the fair the the five fight team fight whereas dp is looking to kind of kite out the 5v fight and then re-engage with maybe maybe that Galio alt or the Zyra alt. Um, Kai'Sa is almost their, I want to say almost their only damage really. Um, that's like straightforward. Really, it takes a little while to build up. Zyra can do damage if she gets some items. Galio can do damage if you get some items. And then Trundle is looking to just deform the uh, tanks on the opposite side. So I think this one's a full skill matchup. Like, um, if, as I said, both teams are pretty big on 5v5s. 
one's looking to disengage and then re-engage, whereas the other one's just a full-on engage. Yeah, you know, I definitely agree with you there. I mean, it really all comes down to how everybody plays their champions. And like you said, how, you know, NTA staggers their ultimates and how DP is able to engage and disengage. And so I think for me, you know, um, I don't really know who to give it to at the end of the day. Um, I've seen DP play very well. I've also seen NTA play very well. So I'm a little torn. I you know, Twitch chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe both of these teams are actually tied for third place right now. Um, and really? so this, I, I think so. DP, no, DP, DP is in ninth place. I think. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I have the standings up. DP is in ninth place. Oh, yikes. NTA well, is in third. There, There's a three-way tie for third. Mm-hmm. Um... So, um, with that being said, I really hope DP can pull out a win here. Um, being the ninth, uh, being in ninth place, you know, um, does not mean anything. Um, we've seen bigger upsets before, and we will continue to see upsets again. Um, and we might be able to see one here, you know, depending on how DP is able to play their comp and their, and how each individual player of DP plays. If you're a PBB fan, you want DP to win. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So that way NTA doesn't um, get ahead of that tie there. Um, yeah, so the PVP would be tie with NTA. With the O2 tonight, will be at 7-5. and five. News, news team assembles at 6-4, and four, having played two less games right now. So if you're a PVB fan, you want DP to win. But if you're not a PVB fan and you're an NTA fan, you want NTA to win, right? I guess, yeah. That is that is how <laughs> Not the that world I'm partial works. or anything. <laughs> oh my god. In real champion select here, we have the brand and Morgana consistently being traded. I have no idea where they're gonna go. Um Oh they switched. They keep switching. Where will they go? I don't know. I think they're locked in now. Twenty seconds you'll have to lock in. Mm -hmm. So I think we're gonna have the brand mid into the Galio, and then Morgana into the Zyra down bot. Yeah, I think that's definitely a better call here. As a support main, you know, um, the Zyra is going to be super squishy, and so the Morg, if the Morg locks her down, you know, that could be a free kill in that bot lane. Um, and also being a brand player, it's, you know, Galio is pretty, um, you know, he does have his, Galio does have the Q, but if you dodge that, like, Galio really doesn't have any sort of poke. And so um, it makes Brand, Brand um, you know, Brand can easily land some skill shots, especially if Galio E's in to the Brand. Then he could just point blank E Q the Galio, and now the Galio's stunned for a free W. And that, right. yeah, procs Brand's passive. That's a lot of damage. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess, I guess going off of that, I gotta, I might have to give this one to NTA um, with these matchups, but I don't know. I will also give it to NTA, but as a PVB fan, I want DP to win. <laughs> but that aside, I think NTA has a better team comp here, and I just think the better skills uh, as a team to to execute their comp very well. Uh, going back to the Brand Galio, I think Brand's got some range on the Galio, and as I said, the burn will just burn down the Galio shield that you get from the Magic Resist and his passive. Um, I'm a little worried about the top lane, though. I think Aurelia into a Malphite is heavily favored into an Aurelia, but I'm not a top lane expert. Um, mm -hmm. But I believe that Aurelia is a good... It's a good matchup for Aurelia into a Malphite, as Malphite has struggles with wave clear. Um, and he does have teleport. It looks like Aurelia took Ignite, so that might catch the Malphite off guard as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I don't really know how I feel about uh, taking a Ignite just because um, that leaves a lot of um, rotational pressure out of top lane. Correct. And so um, that's that's a very risky thing to thing to do right there. Um, however, we've seen Bear Jr. do it before, and he does play a pretty great Aurelia. So we'll see how it goes here. Um, Please, please, please give us that hashtag. Um, oh God, DP for a DP win. 
or a hashtag NTA for an NTA win. Um, Rob, what are you most excited about for this game? Uh, the fact that I actually have to watch an LCS match. <laughs> Most of the matches <laughs> I don't watch. Maybe I can see oh. a pentakill if I have to put in another $25. Maybe I could see one live. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's the most likely to get a pentakill? I, I would assume Barry Jr. I definitely think out of all 10 of these uh, players, it's definitely going to be Bear Jr. Um, or maybe OP. Um, Right. I think, OP, I think OP, OP has got a good chance. I think mm -hmm. maybe Brick on the side of NTA has a good chance. You know how the brand passives work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, stack, you stack three of his abilities and there's an extra burst of damage and that can spread. He spreads the flames. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure if that passive lands onto somebody, it, it also gives them that, that uh, ring thing as well. Yeah, it does. Um, if 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 it if it uh, explodes and someone's standing in it and it's their third time taking damage from Brand with his like a third ability, then it it'll respread. Wow! And there you have it, the Spirit of Fire Brand skin. I gotta love it. Um, as well as that Ghost Bride Morgana skin. Wow! Someone needs to help the torpedo with the skins. As, as well as Kingston and Bear Jr., actually. Um, <laughs> don't know what's going on. I mean, there you have it. You know, uh, DP just lost this game. They only have two skins, and, uh, you know, NTA has uh, five, so. And uh, the Kai'Sa only has one skin available, so. Wow. Just one. Just wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so looking at Masteries here, you've got... Aurelia on the Conqueror. Conqueror is a pretty strong master right now. Mm -hmm. um, does that press the attack on Trindle? No. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I necessarily like that. I don't know if I've um, seen that before. It's. It, I think it makes sense in theory. Um, I play a little bit of Trindle too, and if you are just standing there taking autos from him, he will definitely get three off, especially with his W and Q, which is an auto reset. So um, he'll definitely be proccing it. Like I said, I don't know if it's going to be worth it, though. Um, but we'll see. I think the other uh, keystones are pretty standard. I think the execute on buy is a little too... Uh, aggressive, but risky. We'll see. A little yeah. risky. Little, little risky. He's planning on getting ahead, definitely, and he's probably going to build damage if you want to execute. Which I don't know if I necessarily agree with. I think with buy, you really need to go into every game uh -oh. with like a blank state. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, the Q miss. The Q biffed a little bit. Um, <laughs> gold lead by 10, GGWP. <laughs> oh, no, please don't run forward him. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, the flame. <laughs> Gerg 7 was better. Yeah, Gerg 7 coming in with the name change. Gurk seven to mouse robber. Uh, I don't know if I get it. Do you I don't get it. I don't get significance it. behind it. I have no idea. Yeah, I feel like I have to get this game to DP for this name change. Yeah, wait, no, now, now we're changing just everything here. Um, <laughs> first we we gave it to NTA for the skins, but the name change is going to DP. Damn. For no name change. <laughs> Even everything the same. Gotta love it. <laughs> um, so we do have a little bit of a weird start here. Barry oh. Jr. is going to take this red buff on the top side. Yeah, that's a little aggressive. I know DP is like, can like win condition is to get Bear Jr. ahead, um, and that's how they consistently play, which is totally fine. Oh, and we got a pause. Um, yikes! A pause. Welcome to the PMA LCS life, where everything is paused. Oh yeah, as you um, saw, you know. Yeah. 
and almost every other games I've casted, there's at least one pause. So here we go. I think I played two games this week without a pause, or two games this week without a pause. Wow, that's got to be exciting. Not not pausing. Uh, the game's on. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, if, if we're going to take a look at the start really quick, we've got red buff over to Aurelia on Bear Jr. Um, that did not give him level 2, though. Yeah, and he's going to have to back because he's so low. I really don't know how... Um, don't really know if it was worth it, honestly. Uh, just because he's going to lose out on some minion activity. XP, which if you do that on the top lane, you're just handing your lane to the you know um, opponent. Um, so, however, Bear Junior is a very experienced player, so maybe he could you know re you know make his lead back up, but you might have to low TP for that. Um, but yeah, it looks like we got a disconnect from Ron Gurgundy, um, so it's going to be a longer pause here. I can just tell. Um, but yeah, Rob, anything new or interesting in your life? <laughs> uh, no, not nothing, nothing crazy yet. Um, uh, my life, my life is a pretty boring life. Really? I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to do green stuff. I can't see half the chat because the champion stuff's in the way. How do I? Yeah, same. That? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> just kind of deal with it we'll figure that out um, oh yeah and then are you familiar with the jungle because I'm not sure how this works so why didn't he get level 2 off the of red is that because the yeah. smite um, gives you experience the smite not only does the smite give you experience um, oh wait actually it might just be the smite yeah it's definitely just the smite um, however I believe Leave after three minions die, he'll get level two. So he does, like I said, if he TP, like if he backs and TPs to lane, he'll he might have an advantage, but it's really he doesn't have TP. That's the problem. Oh yeah, he took ignite. <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, very very aggressive uh, plays. So yeah, he'll definitely he'll definitely be behind in XP actually because. Uh, up the walk to lane. I wonder if, uh, well, we'll have to see because Malphite disconnected, so he's walking back. I wonder if he'll get the experience for that. That might be an unfortunate situation for him there. Yeah, I don't, I, if I was him, I would not walk back just because you're, the Malphite knows he's not there. So, um, you know, where else would Bear Jr. be? Um, you know, Malphite hopefully knows that Botlane gave Trundle a leash. Um, so that really, you know, through process of elimination, you know, Bear Jr. can only be like in the river, maybe doing scuttle or something like that, but that would even be right. more strange. So um, walking We also have to think that Galio helped him out at the red buff, so Galio is going to be a little behind in the lane as well. Galio oh yeah, Galio doesn't get any experience from just helping. Um, so that's we'll see true. If Brick will be able to, to um, Galio out of the lane there. I think I think a Galio into a Brand is a very bad matchup for Galio just because of the mm -hmm. range issues. Oh, it definitely is. Um, like like if the Galio doesn't get ahead in this early game, it's just so it's so detrimental here. Um, you know and. I don't really know who provides more utility to their team um, because the brand has so much damage output with his ult, like we've talked about. So, you know, um, and the Galio, when he ults somebody, they gain like the resistances, like armor and magic pen or uh, magic resist. So, really, it's a pick your poison kind of thing where, um, you know, there's pros and cons to both. But at the end of the day, I think it's kind of even. So, um, Brick definitely has the advantage here for his team. Or for the Midland team. Yeah. 
So did you see the Zyra and Kaisa pushing in the Lucian Brand in the tower? Mouse Cop is a little bit of short of health here. He's about a little more than half. Uh, did I see that right? Did Greg just throw a Q backwards? Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I was not looking. However, he did throw a Q right onto Yuramus, who's going to have to flash out here. That is a flash down. Um, best case scenario there for um, the bot lane here. As we have a little bit of a river skirmish here, the brand is just outputting the damage onto uh, the torpedo here. So we're seeing that matchup not go in favor of Galio. Um, as Vera Jr. is going to force Ron Gurgan need a flash, but the Ignite comes off here, and Kingston Hyperx is here to fill her, and the red buff is actually what kills him as well as the Ignite, actually, and that, that causes a first blood here for Bear Jr. Yeah, the red buff came into play there. He's able to pull that slow down and then allow Trundle to come in with his pillar to also give another slow. Mm -hmm. that... Yeah, I mean, that was definitely like an very unfortunate situation there for Ron Burgundy. Um, especially out of everybody to get first blood, you would you don't want that Aurelia to get first blood because now she's going to be ahead and that could cause future kills or, and more problems here in the top lane. Yeah, as we talked about in, in Champ Select, if um, the Aurelia can get an early start to the game and push this, forward, push this game forward over to mid, mid late game, she's going to be able to put out the damage and be able to get into the back line of new teams assemble. Um, looks like Malphite did uh, teleport back into lane up top. Irelia does not have red buff anymore, so she might be not as dangerous to Malphite. But I, as I said, I think that matchup goes heavy favor into the Irelia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kingston Hyper X here is looking for something in the bot lane, but will not find Mouse Robber or Mouse Cop. Um, oh my god, I just realized why he changed his name to Mouse Robber. Because his AD carry is Mouse Cop. Yikes. <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't realize that. Um so look at that. <laughs> mouse cop, mouse robber. Mouse robber. Wow. That's really cute. Um but anyway. Uh <laughs> I, I don't know how we didn't pick up on that. <laughs> Do you hear that, Greg? You're cute. Oh, well, he doesn't need to hear. He he knows it already. But anyway, um, yeah, I, you know, uh, oh, Bear Junior here is looking for Ron Gurgany here in this bush, but Ron will be able to get away. Um, everybody's. It looks like uh, New Team Assemble is actually pushing all of their lanes in um, here in the top and mid lane as bot lane uh, for DP went back. So. Um, yeah. They're able to push. Um, so, and that, you know, that closes the gold lead a little bit to only three, 400 gold. No, yeah, 300 gold here. Um, even though uh, First Blood is 500, and that's just from the good farming on the side of NTA. Yeah, we see that Brand already has double the CS of the Torpedo, which... He's able to do that as Brand. He's just able to push him out. Um, and yeah, he has a level six advantage because he didn't help his jungler uh, farm. So, or get a leash. So yeah, definitely makes sense here. Yeah, I mean, we've got that 24 CS difference in mid lane. Uh, as you see top lane fight here. Oh yeah. Um, it looks like uh, that will be a Cloud Drake for the blue team here, who is double penetration. Looks like um, get a little bit of extra move speed. Oh my god, OP, what are you doing? Are you frontlining his Kaisa? He's going to have to blow his heal and flash. And it looks like we have a little bit of a mid lane fight, but Director Kamek took me to the top. I don't know why. Kingston Hyperx is caught out here and goes down to Brick. But Ron Gurgundy is actually also going to go down to Bear Jr. We have a lot happening here simultaneously. I love it. Lovely the legends. Um, OP is BMing a little bit as he, uh, you know, frontlined his kites and was able to live. Um, so, yeah. What happened by is uh, we had Mouse Robber flash for a Q completely missed. And uh, oh. banned his level 7 mastery over to OP. So that's what would happen by as everything else started happening mid and top lane. 
Interesting, wow. That was another solo kill for the Aurelia. This is the time where she's going to start taking off. Um, as we see, Malphite has 23 farms, 30 farm, almost 30, farm, well, over 30 farm behind. Uh, only has boots and a Doran shield. Holy moly, the Malphite, the Malphite is so far behind. Yeah. Jeez, that is, that is the worst case scenario here for, um, New Team Assemble. However, the, the brand is also getting ahead. So, um, it's, I mean, the brand is up 40 CS. I mean, you have, I guess, the worst case scenario is happening for both teams. You don't want the brand to get ahead early, and you don't want the Aurelia to get ahead early, and both of them are doing just that. So, um, they're both playing very well, definitely. Brand, brand did pick up that kill against Kingston Hyper X, the jungle skirmish that was happening. Mm -hmm. um, so, he's not too far behind the Aurelia. Yeah. And I mean, look at this level differential. Uh, the Torpedo literally just got seven as I was talking about it. Like, Brick is almost two levels ahead of their Torpedo. I mean, it is not looking good. The Torpedo really needs to... And I, mean, I think he's building tanky, but he needs to go tanky. He cannot build AP anymore after okay. uh, the first, these first nine minutes of the game. Yeah, for sure. I think you've got Malphite, who's clearing Krugs, has not even stepped back into lane. I think just wants to stop ending up there. Mm -hmm. um, as you see Vi on the bot side of the jungle and Trundle on his bot side of the jungle maybe looking for bot games soon? Yeah, maybe. Um, You know, oh, the brand is going to throw his alt out. I don't know why. That might have been a misclick, actually. Um. The cooldown is kind of low, but I don't think it's super low here. Nine minutes and 40 seconds into the game. So, interesting call there to do that. Um, however, it does get the torpedo so low that he can't really defend his own minion wave here. As he's yeah. going to be... Oh my, oh, my God. He's so low. If the brand had ult now, this would have been a good time to ult. Um, like yeah. I said, I think he ulted a little prematurely there. It's hoping for the uh, bounce. Oh, we got a flash alt here coming in. Uh, Kingston HyperX is trying to. Oh my God, is he gonna die? He he is so freaking low. And Ron Burgundy actually is gonna flash alt here, and Opie is looking to kill Mouse Robber. It's not gonna be enough here as the tor torpedo TP'd in. I think this was kind of a bad call here as now Kingston Hyper X is, he went back into the fight. Definitely a bad call here. However, Brick Timberlands here. Yeah, this is not looking good here for double penetration here as Ron Durgandy gets a third kill from this TP. He now has a killing spree and the gold lead has actually swung to News Team Assemble. What? <laughs> that is a very, uh bad TP, for lack of a better term. Um, there is no reason for Little or for the Torpedo to go back into there um, after two of his members have already died, uh, especially when your top lane does not have teleport. Um, as Aurelia tries to push down his turret, she's not going to be able to get it. Um, it was an original, very good initiation by the Zyra and the Trundle coming in to try and kill the Lucian and Morgana there. Um, it was a very good initiation there, but the teleport from the Malphite just completely turned it around. Mm -hmm. Alting in, getting a kill, and then all of a sudden having two kills, and then the TP from mid lane to bot lane, just feeding over a third kill. Um, that puts kind of the Malphite back into this game, even though he is 70 CS down. He's 70 CS down? Holy fuck, dude. That, 101 to 33. <laughs> that does not... No no offense to, to Ron here, but he is still so far out of the game. He needs... If, if 15 CS roughly equal one kill... So put that in perspective here. Ron is... If, he, if Ron is 75 CS ahead, I know he's not, but just roll with it, he would technically be 7 and 0. Whereas... Ron Gurgundy, if you add his CS to kills, is technically only five and two. I mean, Bear Jr. is so is disgustingly so far ahead here. Um, 
Yeah, while yeah. we were talking, they picked up the uh, Rift Herald there. Aurelia's got it on her back pocket. She's probably going to continue to split push top lane. There's no reason for her to go anywhere else. She doesn't have teleport. Yeah, and I mean... she's so far ahead that nobody can contest her. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you know, it would be nice for her to save it. I believe she could probably... If she really wants, she could definitely get first tower here um, by herself. Yeah, it looks like she's not even going to go put it top lane. She's already oh. got first tower. Oh, yeah, they got first tower. Yeah. Yikes. Um, she's got yeah, a head so... bot because the Infernal Dragon is up for uh, the taking here. Mm hmm yeah, knowing that Ron's TP is down still from the earlier uh, team fight, they, you know, double penetration could definitely take this for virtually free. Yep. Um, that's a swipe from Kingston Hyper X. However, the Morgana Q is going to land. And oh my God, where did Zyra go? His Kingston Hyper X here is so freaking low. He pops his ult though. And yep, Brick is able to get it, but Brick is going to go down at the cost of his life here. Ron Gurgity is here and he's looking for OP, but. Oh, he's able to get away because the rest of his team is there to follow him here. Um, that's a, what is that? A, a dragon and two for one, I believe. Um, Baxter here is looking. He's going to ult, but it's not going to be enough here as OP uh, kills him and now gets double buffs here. Ron is defending this tower alone with Rift and three of Double Penetration's members here. Yep, the tower is going to go down, and it's not looking good here for News Team Assemble. Yeah, their bot lane of new teams assembled went bot and then ended up recalling and Morgana rotated mid, but it was too late for that. Um, Baxter went in very, uh, I guess, super hyper active with his ult and just <laughs> ulted into three of the members of DP. He just quickly burst him down and kill him off. Um, Aurelia popped the Rift Herald mid before they started fighting. Um, well, after the team fight had finished, um, I did not see how Zyra died. Did she actually die, like, super fast? Yeah, what happened was um, she got stunned by uh, numerous things. She got stunned by the Morgana Q, and then Brick actually landed a very sick EQ combo onto Yuramus. So the stuns actually stacked, and so he was literally just sitting there for about, uh, not 30 seconds, closer to, like, 10 and he just got obliterated as he might get uh -oh. caught out here again. Yeah. It's not looking good. He's going to have to blow his flash, but will it be enough here? Yes, he dodges the Q, but no, it's not going to be enough as he gets exhausted and they tower dive him. Goodbye, Yurimus. Yeah, a quick rotation of four people down the bot from new team assemble. They might be able to get this tower down as there's no one going to respond, but it really has continuously just split pushes top lane. Yeah, you know, that's the one thing I don't like about playing Zyra. I don't play her a lot just because she really doesn't have any CC outside of the root, and the root is actually very difficult to land um, just because it's so the hitbox is so thin. So, um, ooh, Bear Jr. Wow. here going uh. so far in. <laughs> Definitely not a good call here as he leaves Kingston HyperX up to die as well. Goodbye. Um, I believe... Did he flash in, or did he flash no, out? No, he dashed in, flashed out, but they completely just bursted him down after he flashed. Yeah, I don't know if that was the right call there, but um, it looks like they're going to be able to get this tower bottling, too, as um, Double Penetration is just out-rotating their opponents here. Even though they're down by half the kills here, it's, not, it's still not enough, um, as that is a fourth tower that will probably go down here. Ooh, teleport. Oh. No, it looks like Ron Gurney is going to stop the teleport push with uh, uh, the teleport push. He's going to stop the bot, the bot push here with his teleport. So um, another good rotation here for both teams, actually. Yeah, even though we're 17 minutes into this game, we're getting the four-man dives bot still. Yeah. Morgana Q lands on OP and just does so much freaking damage. Holy cow. Yeah, the rotation by Aurelia bot lane. I'm not sure if they're looking to get this tower or not, but um, I think they already have vision of her. I think they know that Aurelia is bot, but she's just avoiding all the vision to try and see. Oh. You know, I think a really being bot is actually a good call by Bear Jr. here. Um, there's no big objectives left. 
Rift was already taken. Dragon was already taken. So the next, uh, you know, trying try to make a sense of League of Legends here, I think the next objective up for double penetration would be the spot lane tower. It's the last two, tier one tower that's up, and it's le it has less than half its health left up. So this is actually a really easy tower to get. I mean, it's basically free goal, especially if the mouse duo here tries to gauge it. Oh, and I lied, actually. It's not as free as I thought here, as Brand is going to kill the Zyra for free, as well as the Galio. That kill goes on to Mouse Cop here. But um, the tower does go down, so it's, you know, we're trading kills here for objectives and i don't know um if that's necessarily worth it here kingston hyperx here is doing, putting a lot of damage on ron gurgity that press the attack proc uh going off here Wait, why did he stop it. chasing him um you know he uh kingston hyperx is out of mana and yeah. ron not only has his flash but also his alt up i mean i don't know if kingston would know that he had those things up but i mean it would have been a risky play um, because I don't think the Trundle's really that tanky. He does have ninja tabbies, but that's it. True. I just think he could have kept chasing there. He saw all four members of NTA were bot. Oh, no. Brick Timberline getting stunned here, and he's going to miss his own stun, actually. And Bear Jr. is just going to ultimate. Yep. Just goes down. That, yeah, oh. He's, oh, my God. Ron Burton <laughs> oh, no. missing his ultimate. Holy cow, but Bear Jr. is only at half health here. Oh my god, Ron Burgundy is going to dodge the stun here, and Baxter's here to help. Yep, Baxter kills uh, Bear Jr. here with his ultimate. Holy moly, and that gives Baxter a free blue buff, I believe. Um, the Torpedo here is looking for Ron Burgundy here, as he knows they're he's so low. Board. But they're on a ward here. Yep, that's oh, the he taunt. Flashed. He's going to land right on oh, Ron Burgundy, flash. and that kills Ron oh, Burgundy. No. Um, pretty good pretty good there um for the galio to uh taunt like that really well executed here from the side of dp that's going to be the third drag as oh my god uramoots just goes down again and yep opie's trying to frontline kaisa here i don't know if it's going to work yeah no it doesn't he goes down here and now the torpedo is going to be caught out that's a double kill for uh mouse cop here but is Mouse Driver going to be able to help out his cop here and, uh, you know, land a stun? I don't think so here as um, the deaths just keep rolling in here for uh, double penetration here as they're down eight kills. They're down eight kills, but they did pick up that second Infernal Dragon, so it's an extra 16% uh, increase on their AP and AD um, in their team. Barry Jr. is very, uh, very into dashing all over the place, huh? <laughs> yeah, he keeps he keeps using that dash, um, and I don't know if it's worth it. However, the brand, uh, Bear Jr. was able to get that ultimate out of brand, but oh my god, what the... Wow, that is very aggressive. I don't know why they're going in like that. Bear Jr. just gets obliterated by the very brand. Ambitious. And yep, there goes the... I don't even know how uh, Kingston died there. Was that the, the W? It must have been. Um, oh, he, I didn't see him die either. Huh? Yeah, he just, I don't even know how he died. Um, but yeah, you know, we're getting to that 20 minute mark and Brand is just getting so disgusting here because um, he's just so far ahead in this mid lane. It looks like Top Tower is probably going to go down here and that evens, well, it doesn't even out the gold, but holy moly, does it increase the gold lead just a little bit. Double penetration is down 3k gold here, but they're still looking pretty strong. I have to admit, with Bear Jr. being pretty, pretty freaking fed here, um, you know, being up uh, about 60 CS. However, uh, Brick Timberland, uh, Timberland, whatever, um, it has officially flamed Horizon the torpedo here. And it looks like Kingston HyperX might be caught out here, but it looks like he's not as Bear Jr. is going to pop his ultimate for nothing, basically wasting it. Bear Jr. is so freaking aggressive here as he's looking for Baxter here. He can't find him, though. He really can't. Is the sun going to land? No, it's not. Oh, the, the root does land on a Bear Jr. Now he's caught out. Goodbye, Bear Jr. Well, you need to stop being that aggressive or your team will completely go down yep there it goes the mouse robber does go down but at the cost of kingston hyper x i don't know if it's worth it here mouse cop just flashing in he knows he's safe because he's at full hp and the enemy team is not Yermos here is frantically running away i don't know if he's going to be able to get away as the torpedo is here as well 
The torpedo might be caught out here, but oh, actually, he's able to get out alive. Thank God, as that is just another team fight lost here. Bear Jr. is just literally mindlessly running into the enemy, and it is costing his team so much. Yeah, I mean, he was very fed Oh early. my uh -oh. God, the Kaisa killing Brick Timberland. Um, definitely worth it, even though she will go down. Um, holy moly. The, there's so many flashes are just blown there. Nobody has a flash up right now. Um, yeah, Bear Jr. just completely chased the Vi. It was too far into the jungle. Uh, we had Mouse Robert throw a Q out and just land onto Aurelia, and then you had the Malphite alt on top of it, and they were just able to burst the uh, Aurelia down. She just completely killed her while she was separated from her team. Zyra had a good knockup there on two members of NTA, but it was just not enough just to, to keep team from dying. Oh, got Barry Jr. Oh, no, Barry in. Jr., there he goes again, dying. I mean, it's just, it's a very sad situation. Like I said, at about 10 minutes of the game, Bear Jr. was theoretically 7-0, and but now he's lost that lead. I mean, the only person doing exceptionally well on the side of double penetration is Opie, but he even even him is down 30 CS. So, yep, and there we go. It looks like Yermus here is going to get caught out here. Yep, and he goes down. He was trying to get away, I guess, but um, he wasn't able to get out as the exhaust went right onto him. Um, and that's going to be a Baron here for NTA. Barry Jr. just needs to learn not to dash in like that. Every time he's dashed in, he's gotten picked off and just died for it. Oh my god, there's a team fight going on. I looked away from my computer for one second, and that's just two kills right there. After um, starting the Baron here, now that's going to be a free Baron here. I'm so sorry I wasn't paying attention here. Um, that... Yeah, Bear Jr. is going to alt, and yes, it does land, but was it really worth it getting just Baxter? I mean, I don't know. Opie is going to be kind of caught out here. He's going to have to heal just to get the extra movement speed away, but it's not going to be enough. Ron Gurgity is looking for him, but Mouse Cop here might actually go down. He will. He gets the shutdown goal. Oh, oh my gosh. God. Wait, Opie is still alive. Holy cow. Ron Gurgity is able to make it away as well, but Brick Timberland is, or I keep saying Timberland. Rick Timlin is definitely looking for, uh, he was looking for uh, Euromoose, but he won't find him. Yeah, I mean, Barry Jr. went in and practically gave himself up, but he did stop the Baron. They did not get Baron there. Um, I mean, if you look at all those wards across Baron, it's all NTA. DP has no vision whatsoever, pretty much all over the map, besides the one pink ward in the river on bot side. Um, they're just lacking the vision right now to try and keep up with NTA and their decision calls. We do have an air dragon up. Um, it looks like and both teams are headed right there right now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. That Morgana Q just, just literally causes Jermus to die halfway through. Um, yep, and that's going to be an air drake here, but... Ron Gurgany does not care. He's going right on to Euromus here, who, oh, but he dies here as the Vi ultimate comes in right out of Opie here and kills him. But the Torpedo's ultimate is actually enough here to get something here. But it looks, yep, that's just, an, that's Bear Jr. going down again. Bear Jr. is now four and seven. And, oh my God, the Trundle zero and eight. Kingston Hyper X really needs to stop dying here for the sake of his team. Yermus just keeps consistently getting caught out by the Qs of Morgana, and the Morgana Q plus the pool just do almost half his health in just that one small combo. By the time Yermus is able to just get some damage down, he's already almost dead. It, yeah, just, I mean... They keep getting the objective, but they keep losing the team fight, and the objectives are just not worth it when the team fight is lost afterwards. They have four dragons, but they're not going to be able to do much with the dragons if they don't stay alive. Yeah, it, you know, this game is also just so freaking bloody. We are at 41 kills in 27 minutes. I mean, we are approaching two kills a minute here, folks. I mean, it's just, it, this game is could literally be anybody's because initially, you know, 
I remember at one point in this game, we were nine kills and 12. That's actually still a lot because um, they only got four kills for eight. So that's actually not good. But, um, you know, maybe double penetration could uh, close this gap here as they are only down about 4K in gold. Um, so we'll see. Maybe, like I said, maybe DP can come back. But, you know, it's, it's anybody's game. Hey, uh, Biscuit, do you need me to take over now because I'm in game? Uh, no, I, uh, you could grab game two though, if you'd like. No problem. I just want to make sure you're okay, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm good. It looks like Baron is probably going to, oh, never mind. They're going to get off that and the torpedo is actually going to probably go down. I think so. Yeah, that's holy moly. The brand damage here, as well as all the knockups. I mean, that just gives a free double kill basically to brick here. Yeah. And it should be the Baron. I don't know why Ron is recalling here. He might be trying to bait the rest of double penetration. I don't know. Uh, Bear Jr. still split pushing in the bot lane. Um, but wait, maybe new team at Assemble can't do Baron right now. Yeah, Ron recalling there just completely gave up pressure on Baron. I, I mean, I understand he had to answer the Aurelia split push, but they definitely could have just gotten Baron for free. I don't. Wow. Baron gives you the four second recall. You could recall to get Baron and recall just as fast as it took him to recall right there. I, I mean, I, I'm not sure why he would recall there. Losing an inhibitor turret is not that big of a deal, especially when you're winning. You're consistently winning five v five team fights. You, you know, I, I gotta disagree. We've seen double penetration do some. Real, oh my God, Ron Gurney, goodbye. Um, holy moly, the Bear Junior is still pretty far ahead. Um, and that, oh my God, Baxter's gonna flash Q, but miss, unfortunately, as Bear Jr. is actually gonna get ulted upon and knock up two of his teammates. Um, but it looks like Baxter's able to get the kill, kill on Bear Jr. as well as Mousecap killing the torpedo here as he dies for that ultimate. I don't know if it was worth it. That's a one for two. And, um, you know, now MTA can for sure just push out their lanes here. They have the Baron buff. I don't know why they just all push bots since they have the advantage. It would be a 3v4, but that's just me. I just feel like neither team knows what to do right now. They both keep losing these skirmishes. Um, Ron Argandy can no longer 1v1 in Aurelia. Like it, it, he, well, he could never 1v1 the Aurelia, I guess. Um, but I still, I just question that recall. Like, why would you recall instead of just taking the Bearing. Oh no, Mouse Cop there just finding Opie and killing him. Thanks to the Mouse Robbers uh, Q here. Now knowing Opie's dead here, um, New Team Assemble is again has the Baron priority as Kingston Hyper X here is actually going to go down to Brick with that W. Holy cow. Um, he also just completely ate um, the Lucian Ultimate here. But Mouse Robber actually. He might be in trouble here. He's so low, but he's actually going to stopwatch here, and that's going to cost Bear Jr.'s life here. The bait, holy cow, this is next level stuff here, as that <laughs> is almost an ace here for, um, oh, my God, New Team Assemble. There we go. That's their name. And that, that now is for sure a free Baron. Yeah, no one's recalling. No one's there to stop it. They're going to get Baron for free here. Uh Double penetration just needs to learn not to go in one by one. They consistently go in one by one to try and rescue each other from the mistakes that they make, and it's just not working out in their favor at all. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, like I said, I think DP just really needs to slow this game down. They they have two members of their team with nine deaths, as well as a member of their team with seven. It's just, you know, it's it's not a good situation here uh, for the side of double penetration. I mean, they just need to stop dying. I feel like when I'm in my solo queue games, um, the one thing I tell people is just to relax and just to not die. Because if they stop dying, they stop giving free gold up to their enemy team. And so I think that's what um, double penetration needs to do. There we go. Goodbye, you're a moose. They're, now he's zero and eight. You know what I mean? If you're a moose and their team could just all work together and not get caught off by the Morgana Q, like... Like there's OP with the yep, Q. OP with the Q again. Look look at Morgana's scoreline. Gerg has 29 assists. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> like he's if, participated if Gerg, in 32 of 37 kills. Gerg's Qs 
or sorry, Miles Roberts cues have been so crucial to New Team Assemble's success this game. I, I, I'm just wow. Like I'm just surprised. Uh, Kingston Hyperx here is going to try to defend the tower here, but it's not going to be enough here as um, it goes down anyway. We're seeing the, the tower differential close in here as now it's only two here. It's Bear Jr. is desperately trying to push this middle inhibitor here, but he won't be able to get anything. I, I really appreciate how double penetration hasn't given up yet. They're still very much in this game with the four uh, Drakes here. Two of them being an Infernal, like you said, that's extra 16% of AD AP. So um, they're definitely still in this game. They're not, you know, um, letting uh, New Team Assemble just walk away with a free win. Yeah, I mean, they're not letting them walk away with a free win, but it's just they're making it tougher and tougher for themselves as they keep taking these 5v5 fights and just going in one by one right after each other. Uh, right after one person dies, the next person walks in and they just practically die. I think you, you just need to get an overall 5v5 team fight where Desire is able to pick down uh, one person and then just able to do a full combo and kill that person off. Um, you know, Zyra's E is practically the same thing as a Q of Morgana, where if you can get it on there, they're, they're trapped down for like two, three seconds, and then you're able to just burst down that one person. Um, we just need Barry Jr. to completely stop going in, dashing forward and getting picked off as these team fights continue to happen. Yeah, and there we go. There's another Morgana Q, and then Mouse Cop just literally ults on wherever the Morgana Q lands here, and that just gives another free kill. Yurimus is, is literally 0 and 9, just like Kingston Hyper X. Unfortunately, it's very unfortunate here for um, a few of these lanes this game. They're not performing as well as they as uh, double penetration wanted to, and that's going to be a middle inhibitor tower that goes down. Mouse cop here looking for Will the Torpedo, and yep, he goes down to Mouse Cop. Ron Gurgany ulting right on top of uh, Aurelius' head here, and oh my god, the Vi ultimate there. The flash wasn't enough to get out here. Kingston Hyper X literally flashes just to get to his freaking fountain so he doesn't die to the brand. Holy moly, this might be GG here. 41 kills for New Team Assemble. Yep. Goodbye, Kingston HyperX. 0 and 10. Zyra's so didn't pick up the kill there, but. Oh my uh, god. The Morgana Q is just on point this whole game. Uh, Mouse Robber participated in 38 out of 43 kills this game. I, I'm just giving it to him right now. He, gives, he gets my vote for MVP. I mean, there's no other real choice there. I think Monster Rapper just completely shut down the support of double penetration and was just able to, to completely negate an entire person off of the entire team to make this effectively a 5v4. Um, obviously, we have to give some recognition over to Brand with this damage of 38,000 to champions, the highest in the game. Um, the next closest would be 30, which was Lucian. Um, but Lucian's kills all basically came through the Morgana Q, and I think that's the same with the brand damage. Um, mm -hmm. all of the Morgana's just able to lock them down, and everyone's able to follow up. Uh, you know, we saw the Malphite completely get just demolished in lane because of unfortunate events, um, giving that early kill over, and then with the Aurelia having that red buff. But... You know, picking up the triple kill bot didn't necessarily put him back in the game, but it gave him enough uh, items to just go for a like uh, half an item just to help him out a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that was just some exceptional gameplay here for New Team Assemble, just putting in work um, with 41 k 43 kills, excuse me. I I just, I don't, oh my god. Yeah, it's it's crazy. The 43 kills is a lot for for just a League of Legends game. I mean, if we take a look at the damage also done to champions on the side of DP, we've got Galio at 5,900. That's nothing. Next to mm -hmm. the Trundle at 7,300. That's also nothing. Like, those two just were not able to partake in any team fights essentially, and were effectively just shut down with their damage. Like There was no damage on the side of DP, 
And the worst part is that the top member of Total Damage Champions on DP was the Zyra. The Zyra was 1 in 10. Holy moly. Zyra did 21,000 damage to champions, whereas Kaisa's, or OP's Kaisa did 16,800. Like, that that should not be happening. Um, even though Zyra does get free damage with her plants, it's still, with, with just the way that the team comp was going, the fact that Zyra did the most damage to champion is not really, it's a big yikes for a double penetration there. Um, so I think they're going to have to go back here just go back and look at their team comp and exactly figure out how they how they want to do this. You know, you put Will Brooks on the Galio and essentially he just you put him into a losing lane and uh, he it, even though it was a blind pick, it just wasn't like eighty percent of matchups for mid against a Galio are like a losing lane for Galio. So um, I think, as I said, my MVP vote's going to go to Mouse Robber down in the bot lane. The Qs were just able to completely get, um, give give their team the the necessary lockdown in order to kill one person and then just make it a 45 and win the overall team fights. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to see for game two what they change. Um... I'm not really sure what what's gonna have to do, what they're gonna have to do here. Yeah, we'll see. Um, did we make the straw poll? Uh, yes, there is a straw poll created in the Twitch chat. Let's see how that's doing. It's only six votes. Oh, not well. Um, but you know, both of that will announce who MVP was for the first game. Um. So, um, yep, uh, just a quick caster update, too. Uh, Mumbung will be doing play-by-play -play for me. I need to go to bed. So, um, yeah, uh, let's kill the VOD, and then we should be good.